Hi, welcome back to The Walking with Charlie. It's been a little while. It's a glorious Saturday that we're out here. It's the Labor Day weekend. I don't know where the summer went. I'm reminded of what a friend of mine from Newfoundland says. He goes, I turned around and there it was, gone. It's kind of how it feels, doesn't it? So Charlie's been, uh, he watched Free Britney and then he's been taking some solidarity with Scarlett Johansson. So he didn't want to do this for a bit. But actually, I think we just wanted to enjoy our summer, didn't we? And what's really, in your mind, the best way to finish off the summer of 2021. I think a federal election is the way to do it, isn't it? So we're having a federal election, what's it about? Well, I'm sure the candidates are all gonna try and craft their narratives in here somewhere, but I'm gonna take our federal prime minister's uh, idea of why he called the election to heart. And he said, you know, after the pandemic and the response that they've had to it, Canadians deserve a choice. Okay, so let's all make one. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what I think the issues are. And obviously there's lots of issues. And you know, I think everybody absolutely should be paying attention to the election and thinking about what matters to them and their families and their future of how they think the country ought to unfold. But I wanna share with you my view of this a little bit as a professional financial advisor, as a professional financial planner for 30 years almost. And I think if we look at what's happened in the last 18 months, the number one priority, and I mean more important than anything else as a consideration is, what have we spent as a country? What have we done to our balance sheet and our income statement? And because that, as you know, think about your own situation. Having money gives you options. If you don't have money, you don't have options. And we often have to work with people because ultimately all of financial planning is balancing multiple competing financial objectives with limited resources. Well, Canada's no different. So I wanna put you in the position that I would be in. Let's say Canada was a client and I have Mr. and Mrs. Canada or Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. and Mrs. whatever your pronouns are sitting in my office because we're all getting tired of Zoom, right? Uh, and we're having a conversation about where they are right now, what their plans are, what their financial situation is. And I would say, to them, okay, walk me through where you were a couple years ago. How did things look? Well, you know, we were, things were starting to get better. We had some tough times, but we were on the mend. Um, Okay, how much debt did you have? Lots, we had lots of debt. Okay, and how were you managing that debt? Was it, over, was it too much? What were your expenses like, your cash flows? Oh, well, we were spending far more than we were bringing in. Oh, okay, and we're adding to our debt every year. Oh, well, that's obviously not good because this might come as a surprise, but budgets don't balance themselves. You do have to actually pay attention to them. Uh, okay, so walk me through what's happened more recently. Has that condition over? No, no. Uh, about 18 months ago, we had a really big problem, you know, financial problem, health problem, work problem. Oh, okay. So what happened there? Well, we had to increase our debt because things were tough. So, okay, what happened to your debt? It was already high. So what happened? Oh, we added to it. Okay, how much did you add to it? 50%. Sorry, what? You increased your debt by 50%? Uh, oh, okay, that's a big number. Um, but what did you spend it on? Well, some stuff, but you know, did you, I hope it was all like critical. There weren't any luxuries in there. Oh, well, there might've been a couple. Uh-huh. And what do you think we should be doing now? Well, we have some more things we'd like to buy. Really? Do you? Okay. Well, but Darren, you have to understand, interest rates are low. We can afford the payments. You can afford the payments. At what point, if you were me, would you be throwing these people out in your ear going, you're never going to get it. And it's just really a question of when does somebody from the bankruptcy court show up and start taking your stuff and selling it? Because that's the path, right? And I really believe that if we don't really, as a country, get in front of this, and I, and I would encourage you when you hear the candidates and you look at the policies, to me, there's a lot of, again, a lot of things we can talk about, but the overriding concern, in my view, must be, what are we doing to reinstate the financial health of the country? Because if you don't start creating very specific priorities and you don't start getting in front of this, while interest rates are at lifetime, almost historical lows, when are you gonna get in front of it? Because if you don't start taking control now, if you don't grab the wheel, this thing gets out of control and then you don't have any control. And then all the lovely things you wanna spend on and promise, they go away fast because there's no money. And I wanna give you an idea of just what we've done because this isn't just me making this up. This is a big problem because Canada spent more than almost any other country in the pandemic. And I'd argue we're not coming out of this the most productive country, are we? And I saw a stat in Bloomberg recently 
that said, if we look at all of the debt that we hold in a country, so that's the personal debt, government of all levels, corporations, and you take it as a percentage of GDP, what we bring in as a country. Do you know what we won this year? We won the bronze medal, that's great. Japan was first, right? Japan was number one. Number two, Hong Kong. Number three, Canada. Number four, Greece. We didn't want to win this one. We did not want to win this one. So that kind of stuff ought to focus your mind, in my view. And again, by strapping 50% onto the debt that already was too much, these are the things that if the candidate comes knocking to your door, I know, again, we have so many other issues to talk about, but if we don't deal with this one, the financial part of it, all the other ones don't really matter in my view. And as an investor, I want you to be mindful of what does this mean? Because the world is very different. We went through the pandemic and the lockdowns and the disruption of the economy. We talked about the K-shaped recovery. I'll put a link up here to where I talked about that uh, last summer. And I was exactly right on how that's unfolded. Where do we go from here? And I think a statistic I'm going to share with you, because I've had a few people call me recently and say, hey, Darren, I agree this inflation thing is going to be an issue. Oh, yeah, it is. Because if you read every textbook and look at any piece of economic history about what happens when countries spend like this and they devalue the purchasing power of the currency, you get inflation. And that is literally a hidden tax. And all of us are going to take a hit to our purchasing power because of what's been spent. And this is going to last a long time. So what do you do to protect yourself? Because no one else is protecting you. What do you do to protect yourself? Well, I think the first thing you do is you pay attention to what works in high interest rate and high inflation environments. Because we have low interest rates now, but they're headed in one direction, really. And, if, and so I've had a few people ask me about gold. Should we be buying gold? Now, I'm going to put a link up here to a little uh, seminar I did in my backyard last uh, summer in the lockdown about why gold is a terrible inflation hedge. And I'm going to give you just a very quick summary of why it's lousy. And in 1980, right, last time we had big high inflation, 1980, gold was $800 an ounce. And the Dow Jones was at 800 Since then, inflation has gone up about three and a half times, about 350%. Gold has gone up about two, two and a half times since then. The Dow Jones has gone from 800 to 35,500. So inflation went up by three and a half times. Gold kind of did a bit of a double. And the biggest blue chip stocks in the United States went up 44 times. So there's everything you kind of need to know about what you do to protect yourself. So. I'm going to leave that with you. We have lots more to talk about. Charlie and I, I think I've convinced him that uh, we got to do more of these things now that everybody's back to work and we got to get back to opening the country and opening the economy. And uh, I hope you had your vaccines and your microchips and everything else and um, you can start getting back to enjoying life and keeping yourself safe. I've had a few chats with people that, you know, they're still concerned about vaccines and masks. And look, you're entitled to your opinion, but I sometimes feel like I'm arguing with people. I remember when the seatbelts first became, I'm old enough to remember when seatbelts became, the law came into force. And you had people back then arguing, oh, it's my right to not wear a seatbelt. Okay, yeah. I don't know why I'm defending your right to not go through your own windshield. But whatever, you know, I think at the end of the day, all of us just want to be health, happy and healthy and safe. And I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I want you to go out and vote. So if you're Canadian and you're watching this and you can vote, take the time, look at the issues, consider your view, and go make your choice really important we all take advantage of that all right thanks very much we'll keep on walking have a great day no charlie i'm not going to explain what a conservatorship is to you what where are you getting this from i'm talking to mummy we're going back to your old kibble